Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, it gives me a great pleasure. I'm truly honored. I feel very happy and privileged that we're all connected as one family in the Word of God. And we are here to just learn from the Word of God and understand how powerful is the Word and how powerful is our God, both. All right, so warm welcome to this session and especially this series where we are. It's a very short series and today's session is going to be a very short one um, because we are in the process of concluding things and, you know, we will take it from there. Okay, in the, this is our fourth session and uh, the series, the title is the Commander of the Army, right? And we are dealing from the book of Joshua and verses 5 and verses 13 to 15 was our meditation verse. And it is still our meditation verse and we are not moving anywhere away from there. And we are dealing with an incident where Joshua... And his team, they are prepared to attack the Jericho, and the you know, um, and 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 capture the fortress and stuff like that. And they have been asked by God to camp, and then circumcise. And after that, they notice, oh, the manna stopped to pour down from heaven, and they are supposed to eat the produce of the land. And we spoke a lot about the, those those the spiritual values, doctrines, and principles that we could extract from. Those passages and importantly from 13 to 15, Joshua 5, 13 to 15, <clears throat> if you had noticed and if you have seen, you would have understood that Joshua was um, not understanding that it is God who took that form as the commander of the army and it's compared to our Lord Jesus who would be the commander of the army to avenge the um, enemies, the, his adversaries who had been instrumental in the hands of the devil to shed the blood of his saints. On these lines, we spoke a lot and we learned various uh, doctrinal principles that we could apply to our lives and that habitually changes our thought process and whatnot. And we also spoke a lot from the word of God as what principles we could learn. Principles in the sense, not relying on your own muscle power, not relying on that human being and this human being. Whatever may be the situation, your reliability is God. Your dependency is God. You belong to God. You belong there. And you will welcome God's presence to lead you from the front. All the things may look so green because that's how the... Uh, that's how Joshua and his camp, they thought, okay, this is the right time to strike. And they were very confident to win the battle. But their dependency was not on God. And God did not was not very pleased with that. And therefore, he will have to come there. And he says that, you know, I am leading this as always. I am leading this battle because the battle belongs to the Lord, Bible says. You will stand still and see what the Lord is going to do. Not applicable only to people of Jehoshaphat or Joshua's people or Moses or yeah even David but also applicable to every Christian who is living in the current age yes when problems and situations overwhelm in our life and the troublemakers are flooding your <coughs> territory you should invite God in submittance and in surrenderance almighty God I'm not well versed I don't have that wisdom I don't have the courage but I depend on you. And if you are going to lead me from the front, naturally I am encouraged. Naturally I am confident and I have that assurance that no evil weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because in God's dictionary, it's all about victory. There is no defeat or failure in the dictionary of God. And I understand your powers and I believe in you. I trust in you and I commit my ways in your hands. Psalm 37.5 will be your philosophy. 
will be your belief will be your doctrine will be your principle and you will tell god you will bring it to pass yes and i will not lean on my own understanding will be your another principle proverbs 35 these are the things which we have learned um through our previous sessions and i'm just making a quick recap otherwise it it will become little it look like little empty whereas here we are going to talk through a different perspective of the on the same lines as what enables or what makes us qualify to be part of god's army many people take this um, th this doctrine what i'm speaking for granted they think oh i am already qual qualified no there is some level of correction that's needed and that's what we are going to analyze together from the word of god and understand what actually should happen in our thought process and how differently we should be operating ideally speaking from the word of god and therefore our intentions are no different from god's intentions we always think like god we behave like god we speak like god and therefore god is in us and we in god understand christ in us and we in christ holy spirit in us and we are the strong partners to the holy spirit right and what makes us get there and then you really qualify to be part of his army else you don't qualify because why you are on devil side your doctrines are wrong your principles are not not right your priorities have messed up a bit right so a person who commands a person who exercises authority however in a spiritual context a commander is someone who exercises authority over the commands of the lord that right? he also follows instructions but from the lord and according to his command the commander is leading his people and your job is only to follow the footsteps of the commander and Jesus takes that position as the commander and he has commanded um all through the new testament um, you know teachings and preachings through parables and all that what we are supposed to do and and left behind 1050 laws and commandments which every christian will have to be following those loyally from their heart truly from their heart sincerely from their heart only then they qualify to take part in that war of god where jesus himself will be riding on the horse and we all will be given individual white horses and with a white robe we will be following him but god's robe will be dipped in the blood of the saints and he will lead us as king of kings and lord of lords bible says in revelation 19 you take and read right now there are there are there are few uh categories that we want to review in the session and want to shed more light on all of you therefore you understand that the spiritual walk or the christ uh, you know uh, the doctrines that you have to you know you need to be led by certain doctrines and that's what you don't tend to realize as a first principle which will help you to be to qualify yourself to be part of god's army is always receive your orders and commands from the right person right person you need to check out with that only we concluded the previous session also right we, you need to check out who is talking to you do not look at the person but look at the spirit of that person with whom that person spirit is being Uh, you know the person spirit is governed by either the holy spirit or evil spirit you will be able to discern and ask for god's gift of the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and discernment and only that can help you understand whether this voice is voice of god or the voice of men or the voice of devil yeah receive orders from the right person for example a uh, army general would never take orders from a private department right an admiral would never take orders from a captain yeah that there is a hierarchy in which they operate success in life is dependent upon your ability to recognize honor and obey the commands issued by the corresponding authorities 
the person who is really in charge if you fail to analyze if you fail to observe that the person who is standing and commanding you is the right person or not then obviously you have it's almost like digging your own grave joshua 5:14 in the bible says that he said neither am i commander of god's army i just arrived joshua fell face to the ground and worshiped he asked what orders does my master have for a servant what a wonderful saying isn't it whereas in the previous verse he questions are you for us or are you for our adversaries but the moment he hears that he's come to command and lead the people of god he understood who he was or who should be receive our orders from and what authority and by what authority are the questions for which you need to find answers at regular intervals in your life almost in every circumstance you need to find answers for these questions else you are going to be on the wrong side and matthew 28:18 says jesus came and spoke unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth if you have got the power then you are in command under the lord yeah still god will be your governor authority you never think oh jesus himself said and therefore i worship jesus therefore i to have all the power you are given powers but you have to wait for god's command and he is the one who's going to lead you that for principle number 1 always receive your orders from the right person check out it could be your church pastor it could be your own husband it could be your father it could be your boss whoever it may be at workplace but you got to check it out principle number 2 understand the importance of the specific commands that proceed towards you whether it's the right moment or not yeah because god's timing is going to be perfect and about god's timing and in its season he does things in perfectly in, in sorry per- perfectly and he will help you to accomplish the god given task ecclesiastes 3 1 to 15 you take and read you will understand <laughs> and no doubt you have experienced defining moments in your life when you feel the presence of the holy spirit directing your way during those precious moments you recognized and honored the words being spoken to you whether audible or not is a different thing but god can talk to you even uh, not directly speaking in your ears through his voice but then he can also speak from the word of god that's why you need to be grounded and rooted in the word of god day and night those who shall meditate in the word of god god is pleased with them joshua 5:15 if you take and read god's army commander of God's army commander ordered Joshua take off your sandals the place you are standing is holy Joshua did it it happened to Joshua before a great victory right you need to <coughs> understand the importance of the specific command whether it's at the right moment or not right and Exodus 3:2 says that an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire we know that incident that encounter between God and the spirit of god that is burning on the bush and moses and it happened to moses before god used him to set his people from the bondage of slavery yeah so always god will lead us with certain prerequisites and those will not follow after the war but much before the war before your spiritual warfare before you accomplishing your duties and responsibilities as it happened in the life of Moses and Joshua yeah you're able to understand you're able to follow are you ready for this is the question it'll happen to you if it hasn't already happened and it'll happen more than once in every circumstance in every situation you will see god dealing with you in a very personal way in a supernatural way and therefore you will be able to follow god you are able to understand verse and the principle number 3 we are dealing with what allows us to qualify to be part of god's army number 3 is what will lead to your appointment as a commander in the lord's end time army yeah it's exactly what we are dealing here from revelation um you know 19 we spoke but now in the book of isaiah i am going to present few scriptures see god wants you to be a commander in his end time army of believers doesn't only mean that 
Armageddon battle or that battle in uh, I told you in Revelation 19 but also as you live your Christian life as you keep walking across ends of the earth you are going to face lots and lots of spiritual warfare because I keep telling you this we are living in the spirit filled world and we do not know our enemy we haven't seen him and that's the most difficult part you know your enemy you have seen your enemy is he visible you will be able to analyze him you will be able to understand uh, and then visualize you know and analyze that uh, looking at his size looking at the weapons in his hand looking at the army behind him yeah the, the, the elephants horses you will be able to number them out and then you can make strategies and planning to outnumber them to outbreak them to overcome them but you don't see them that's a challenge and that's called a spiritual warfare because we are living in spirit filled world that's why Ephesians chapter 6 is very very important where you need to learn to fight your battle with the six weapons spiritual weapons the belt of truth truth and helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and uh, you know that sword of spirit so many things are six weapons are given there and why because it's not a physical battle you're not shedding somebody's blood but you're fighting with the wiles of the devil the powers and the principalities of darknesses Isaiah 55 4 says that behold I have given him for a witness to the people a leader and commander to the people what is the criteria for being appointed as a commander Isaiah 55 3 again says incline your ear and, ear and come unto me hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David will cling to you these are the promises which builds you you either you follow the commander or you yourself will be appointed as the commander of God yeah the key to your appointment as a commander to your success in life is your willingness to listen yeah you pay attention to the word of God you pay attention to the voice of God the Holy Spirit screams aloud right from within you but you would not pay attention yeah but you would pay attention then it determines the success in your life and that is your willingness to listen to God and obey it's life changing and it's life enriching words. When you do what's right before him obeying his word, you will be amazed and blessed at what's in store for you. Yeah. Isaiah 55, 4 to 5. Um, you, you, you can uh, you know, read from the uh, New Living Translation. It says, see how I used him to display my power among the peoples. I made him a leader among the nations. You will also command nations. That you do not know and people, some people unknown to you will come running to you, obey because <clears throat> I the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel has made you glorious. You see and in Deuteronomy 28 also you can take and read the foreigners will come and submit. Yes, I, I'm reading that for you from the book of Deuteronomy 28 and Then the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they'll sh they shall be afraid of you. Verse number 10. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28, 10. Yeah, these are the verses which we need to be grounded and rooted. But what makes it happen? Only when you pay attention. Only when you listen to his voice. Principle number four. The commanders bring offerings for the work of the Lord. If you want to be a commander, you need to learn to bring offerings. Offerings means not just this money that you just pull out from your wallet and you know uh, throw it into the offering bag. Not not that alone, right? It's it's much different. Numbers thirty one fifty one in Amplified Bible it says, "So Moses and Elias are the priests received the gold from all the military commanders, all kinds of jewelry and crafted objects. Yeah, a lot of gold." But these days, you know what? Those days, it is gold. But here, in the new the new covenant, the glory in the new covenant, if you have understood, it's all about serving his people. Now, how much you serve people, that much of gold and treasures you are staking up in the kingdom of heaven, that's new covenant. And many, many Christians have not understood it. Right? In reading a number of other translations and reviewing strong Concordance, the amount of gold offered to them was around 400 pounds, which amounts to 6,400 ounces. Today's market, it is something like, you know, um, what to say, 10 crore dollars, or I would say 10,000 and 1,000 dollars. 
the money which you cannot even imagine that much it accounts to and they gave it and similarly your service should be to god right now when you put the work of the lord first you also get blessed and from that blessing and that other aspect is as you get blessed materially you should also share it with the people of god you should help the poor downtrodden needy orphans and then yes you are ready you are qualified in that manner that you are qualified to lead the people of god or part of be part of god's army or peep it depends on on your attitude you you yourself can become the commander of god i want to be the commander of god god wanted his children to be reminded of his faithfulness to perform what he had promised numbers 3154 yes you see that what we have read right therefore have the principle of blessing others and blessing god's people and serving god's people have that attitude then you are truly qualified to take part in god's army and fight the battles for his people yeah in the new testament it's not about taking sword and swinging but taking the sword of the spirit in your spirit you will be having that war that warfare you will fight against the principalities and you will redeem your people through prayers <coughs> excuse me and verse and and uh, and, and uh, principle number 5 is you might not understand as why god is doing what he does but he does important point right many a times in our lives in i say 55 my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts you and i may not even understand what god is trying to do because it's beyond our understanding and that's why i read that verse proverbs 3 5 let me not lean on my own understanding because i cannot sit see the situation that are pipeline towards the futuristic course i i may slip off i may rough up in my in my in my life and i don't want to end up there lord as exactly everyone everyone should be praying to god asking for his guidance why because you just don't understand god's understanding god's wisdom is beyond human imagination your journey to successful living and financial freedom might not start the way you think or thought it it should start right you might end up taking a different path to your goal than what you imagined yes you you were supposed to do something but you end up doing something else and and that something else which you ended up doing leads you towards the victorious path and if you sit back and think who made you to change the decision it would have been god because why you were walking in surrenderance in submittance because why you understood my wisdom is not god's wisdom my ways are not god's ways my thoughts are not god's thoughts he is far above me yeah and his wisdom is uncomparable great wisdom i say 559 says for us the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts are than than your your thoughts i i spoke about this god sees things we don't see he's the only person who can see the future there is no one else there are a lot of fortune tellers sorcerers and all that uh, with all the demonic powers they predict something and all that it's a lie of the devil and uh, you know what devils have, devil have power also to fortune tell um, you know that uh, you know be the fortune teller and they have the capacity to accomplish what they want to do powers are given to them on the earth yes but the children of god shouldn't be going to the fortune tellers and asking what like this it's becoming this prophecy is becoming like a business in the christian circles you know people go and want to ask what is a prophecy and they pay some money they are uh, they are asked to pay certain fees before even they uh, have that appointment with that prophet of god can you believe this this is not the way how elijah worked and prophet samuel worked and moses worked not jesus especially right and god sees things beyond what we could see and understands that we don't right and that's why our unquestioned obedience to his command is absolutely essential do not ask all those crazy questions to god why not now god why to wait and why 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 it was not by today and why today and why not tomorrow don't ask any why's and how's and who's and where's and don't ask him any questions because it's beyond your understanding you just do not know 1 samuel 22 2 amplified version says in everyone in distress or in debt or 
you know you know discontented gathered to him and he became a commander over them and there were with him about 400 men even in the distressing situation god has the ability to lift you up provided your attitude is all set right look at the life of david always dependent on god and god raised him even in the terrible situation where he fled from that spot <clears throat> yeah scaring for his life never try to figure out things on your own and that tells that how much you depend on yourself and not on god if you have that principle right you don't rush to prayer you don't rush to god you don't um, ask god's leading you don't close your eyes and you slip into a short prayer 30 seconds you don't have that habit huh? you use your brain intelligence the experiences of the past my education my qualification this uncle that auntie this brother that sister you know, this prophet that church leader but you don't go to god who are you you are the one who always try to figure out things on your own we often mistakenly try to bring god's thought process down to ours when we in fact should be lifting our thought process up to his level and how to do that make the most of whatever you dealt knowing that god is the one who raises the stakes and offers you even better opportunities god always has a plan but on not only that right his plan works do you understand what i'm saying even you have plans but those plans may not work it it will fail it will lead you to disaster it will be horrible you may end up in a tragedy losing your own life and causing enough damage to your family but god's plans are always yes and amen because why his promises are yes and amen yes it is the truth and amen may it be so that's what it means second corinthians 120 All right. In the interest of time, let's move on. Principle number six: Always look to God to meet your needs, and do not depend on men. Do not depend on the worldly people. Do not depend on the blood and flesh. They can never come to your rescue and replace God or His presence. They cannot replace God's wisdom. No way. The commanders in the Lord's army should never lose their humility or fail to recognize. who they are where they are with whom they are yes if you are the true child of god you always will have the habit of asking many questions in the journey of your spiritual walk with god you will never taking you will never be in uh, taking anything lightly in your life why because you are a very serious person uh, walking according to the desires of god look at second kings 5:1 Naaman commander of the army of the king of Syria was a great man with his master accepted and the lord has given victory to Syria he was also a mighty man of valor but he was leper he had a problem and no question naaman was somebody however he was no doubt impressed with who he was and what he had accomplished after all the king held him in such high regard that he sent him to the king of israel with a letter of introduction and pretty nice offering for the prophet so you know how much of honor he had in the sight of his own king right but this naman had somebody to advise him and that was not the king that was not the best of his captains that was not the best of his soldiers but that was a slave girl in his own house and she was israeli and she says go and visit the prophet the king of arn arnam aram told him i will send a letter and whatever that gold offering and all that but who gave that suggestion who stipulated the direction it was a slave girl and that word proceeds from the mouth of god and that's why bible says that you need to learn to depend on god commit your ways and trust in the lord i i repeat this again and therefore god is not running short of resources he will find his ways to help you to reach out to you through men or directly or sending his angel or he will find his ways and nothing is difficult for god bible says nothing is harder for god is there anything harder for me to do he asked sarah with man it is impossible but with god all things are possible matthew 19:26 says and therefore he will figure out his way no doubt naaman was consumed with his own self importance when naaman was told by the prophet to uh what to say that drown himself in the jordan river and seven times and he was offended for two reasons first he felt 
slighted by the prophet because he didn't speak to him personally. He sent his servant, Gehazi, to go and convey this message. Yeah, you're, you're also having that prejudice in your life. See, God doesn't talk to me directly. He's talking through his word. He's talking through his prophet. Don't I deserve to hear God's voice? Don't ask such crazy questions. You will be the loser. Because why? The truth is you don't deserve. Nobody deserves. And you don't question God. It's beyond your understanding. I'm telling you this. Things that are out of your control, do you question in this world? No. Do you question politics? Do you question the Prime Minister of India saying, how can you become Prime Minister? You will be thrown into the jail for the rest of your life. You don't ask such crazy questions. Why? Because politically they will avenge you. Therefore you're scared. But the God, you're all worked up. Why? Because he's not going to come down and eat you up. But that is the day where he's going to avenge you. That is the day where you're going to be judged. White throne judgment. Watch out. And you have to give an account of every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Every idle word, Bible says. Every useless word. Every useless question you ask him. Matthew 19, 12, 36 and Ecclesiastes 3, 15. <clears throat> yeah. And Ammon was saying, doesn't this prophet know who I am? And who is he to treat me this way? This is what he says. It's always important to remember that pride leads to sins and problems. It, it creates more tussle to the existing problems. Add more fuel to the burning fire. And you don't want to do that. Reasoning is good. But that reasoning with pride is bad. Reasoning in, in humility is good. Yeah. Mary, Mother Mary was having that reasoning. How do I know this all will take place? In humility, she asked the same question. As much as John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, asked the same question, but then he was asking in disbelief. Disbelief and pride, they go hand in hand. What does pride mean? You, you believe in yourself so much because you have so much of knowledge and you don't trust anybody, including God, that easily. That's pride, arrogance. All of them fall in the same place and you're blindfolded. And that's why he, the angel said, you shall not talk, you shut up. But Mother Mary, she said, Amen, may it be so. Why? Because her questions were questions in humility. But if your questions are questions of pride, that leads you to sin and creates more problems. Proverbs 13.10 13, says that only by pride cometh contention, but with the well, Advised is wisdom, wisdom. Proverbs 29, 23 says, Pride ends in humiliation, while humility brings honor. There is difference between humiliation and humility. Humility leads you to honor, victory, success, overcomers. Whereas pride leads you to humiliation, defeat, failures, errors, which you cannot rectify. And your death will be a tragedy. Like how it happened in the life of Judas Iscariot full of pride and full of arrogance and he would not listen. Until the last moment, God gave him a chance. Is this how you betray your friend? At that time also, he could have said no to that betrayal and asked Jesus to walk away. There was a chance or he, he, he wouldn't have kissed him. Therefore, these guys wouldn't have identified who Jesus was. But anyway, Jesus would come and say, I am Jesus. But why would Judas Iscariot be the reason for that? That's why Jesus was very disappointed. Without betrayal, I'm already, I'm already uh, having that mindset to submit myself for the prophet, for the prophetical messianic prophecies to be fulfilled. Why would you come in between and become a prey in the hands of the devil for the thirty silver coins? What made him to do that? He never pays attention to God. He listens to men. He listens to himself. But Naaman listened to both the slave girls and to his soldiers. Yes. And no doubt Naaman was wondering what his servants would think, what passerbys would think, what people would think about a man of his stature, you know, dunking himself in such a dirty river. Actually, it was not a free-flowing river, by the way. It was just stagnant. Yeah, when God asks you to do certain things, it may not sound logical. It may be sounding absolutely foolish sometimes. Why? Because God wants to put your wisdom down to the ground. Yeah, God wants to put your wisdom and intelligence to shame that even some of the foolish things that God does will be greater than man's, the, the best of the intellectuals. Bible says that. 
Yeah, and therefore you start to depend on him blindly. You shall follow him as a sheep follows a shepherd. Whether he leads him to the butcher shop or whether he leads him to the, the you know, green field. Follows him. The shepherd, uh, the, the sheep follows him. Why trust him? Are we more concerned about looking ridiculous or obeying the man? The word of, word of God. No one else can fight your battles. No one else will answer for your obedience to his directions or, you know, lack thereof on judgment day. No one else can walk in your shoes, but you will have to give an account. Now here is the revelation what <clears throat> someone else thinks. It will do nothing to change your circumstances, but you can. <clears throat> so don't look around, look up to God. Let people think anything they want. Let people speak anything they want. But you lead yourself towards God and be led by the hands of God in the right direction. And it's interesting to see that Naaman, a commander, the command of the Syrian army was having difficulty obeying commands if they didn't reflect what he perceived to be his position in life. The story of Naaman is a perfect example of how even commanders <coughs> in God's army must be vigilant. See, the commander understands the, the language in command and you will see that habit from the centurion who came to Jesus and said that when I command people to come, but I don't want you to come because I understand the power in the commanding words of God because I'm a commander too. If you command my Lord Jesus, that's enough. It's going to happen. And Jesus was amazed. Look at him. And he spoke in that military language. But he, Naaman also was a military person too. But he did not perceive the voice of God through Elisha. Why? Because he was carried away in pride. But finally the miracle takes place. Because why? He had some good servants. Who understood this power of command. And they said, hey, you lose nothing. You came anyway so far. Why don't you do this thing which the prophet is asking you to do? If you, if, you, if, if you benefit out of it, then you are the winner. It's good for you. Why don't you do it? And then the one good thing Naaman did was he paid attention to his subordinates. And that's a very good learning that you and I can take from him. He listened to the slave girl. Can you believe? Commander of the army listening to slave girl. And Israels are, Israelites are like dogs to them. Syrians. They hate them. That tells like Naman was a very humble man, but he was carried away with pride of his own uh, stature and uh, uh, of his own position. Sometimes you may be a very humble person, but then considering your position and your uh, society in, in the society, you need not focus completely and follow the word of God. And that's a big problem. And you be careful. And the last principle uh, we learn and then we close with that. Okay. We will take another 5-10 minutes and we will close with that. Commanders never quit until they are victorious. In other words, they never ever give up. In other words, you are a warrior. You are a spiritual warrior. You are a prayer warrior. And you are a Christ uh, disciple. You are walking in the Christ discipleship. Then you will have this habit. Those in authority... You know, have a presence, a confidence in who they are. And it's evident to those who near them. For years, um, you know, this never changed. Those under authority are always ready to follow the orders of those in authority without hesitation or reservations. Very obedient. And military, it is mandatory, right? You disobey, then you're finished. They will teach you such a lesson next time. You won't even think in your dreams to disobey your authority. Bible says be submissive to your authorities. And those in command also have a confidence that despite any and all adversity, they will ultimately, this person will be victorious. They will have that confidence in you. Let's look at the life of Naaman again and learn two more valuable principles or lessons, right? First, don't quit or give up when it looks like all is lost. That's a principle you can learn from Naaman who already had his pride wounded, could have quit after going down the first, second, third, fourth, or how many other times, but he didn't. And as I said earlier, his obedience 
to the man of God brought his deliverance. And if Naaman had quit that incident of not listening to his servants, he would have never experienced miraculous manifestation. And Psalm 27, 13, Psalm 27, 13 says this, I'm sure now I will see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Do not quit. I say it again. Stay with God. The psalmist is encouraging us. Have you ever gone through personal problems, adversities and something that was publicly embarrassing and you become a kind of a hall, hall of shame? Eh? Your name is listed there and something terrible happened and you looked around to find that those folks you thought were your friends either became your enemies or they are nowhere to be found closer to you. And you do have one friend who will never quit on you. His name is Jesus. Your elder brother, intercessor, and his and Holy Spirit, your friend and companion, and father, who is having always that compassion and mercies on you. They will never quit. And Psalm 37, 27 says that turn your back on evil, work for the good, and don't quit. God loves this kind of thing, never turns away from his friends. As the contemporary worship song says, I'm a friend of God. But more importantly, he's a friend of yours. And when you don't quit or give up, he's right there with you again. That's the beauty of God. And second principle you could learn again from um, uh, Naaman under this concept of not quitting. Commanders never quit. right? Naaman lost more than his leprosy in the river Jordan. He lost his need for pride because he found something even more powerful through you know, cleansing of his health. And 2 Kings 5.15 says, Naaman returned to the man of God. He and all his companions stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. He acknowledged that the God of Israel is the God that I am supposed to worship and humble. So now accept a gift from your servant. Naaman was down in, uh, in his pride and he was he became a very humble man. But he came out of that muddy Jordan, a new man, recognizing Jehovah God as the only true and living God. But he has to go through that muddy incidents. Yes? Are you having that muddy situation in your life? Economic crisis and tragic incidents and health issues and it may look as if it's muddy, stagnant and all that. But when you go through that incident... You will come out like Naaman, cleansed, clean, humble, ready to accept God and ready to fight more battles. His heart was turned from the one that was self-indulgent and full of pride. The one that was ready to give gifts to the man of a great and glorious God. But the same mouth cursed the man of God just few hours ago. Who he thinks he is and you know who I am and all that, right? You also tend to do that. God doesn't know my position. How much I have done for God? Really? A commander is moved by the circumstance of the life because he was intimate. But sorry, because he has intimate knowledge of the supreme commander. And the, the commander of the commanders is God. Yahweh God, supreme commander. And he also has guaranteed assurance that you will be on the winning side. As long as you fall on the side of the supreme commander and follow his footsteps. No harm shall befall you, Bible says. Your foot will not dash against the stone, Bible says. No weapons formed against you shall prosper, Bible says. Psalm 91, Isaiah 54, 17. Yes. And everything you do, you will prosper, Bible says. There will be abundance in every good work that you do. You will have all sufficiency in all things, Bible says. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Yeah. And one more thing is, like those under authority who obey commands will ultimately exercise great authority. God will prosper you. God will promote you at your workplace, in your families, and the society, and in the church. Yeah, He will elevate your spiritual values. Because why? You are grounded and rooted in the spiritual principles and doctrines. Your priorities are always spiritual. For years, you know, when you are in this kind of you know, principles, when you are in change, you don't have to tell those who understand authority because they will recognize and honor you. You don't even have to speak sometimes, right? People will immediately honor you just by looking at your discipline, just by looking at your face. They could recognize your spiritual quality. God's desire is 
for you to be a commander in this end time army so stop acting like a private person or a heathen yes beloved i hope you have learned a lot through these sessions and with this we will wind up the series and i hope it was useful the ultimate thing that you and i have learned or many lessons many doctrines but of all one stands tall one principle that stands tall depend on god without any reasoning follow his foot, foot footsteps and do not rely on yourself or on the worldly people but depend on him and many a times god always comes and tells you that i am the commander of this situation i am the one who's going to lead this battle for you against those troublemakers but you ignore god yeah because why we are not focused on god we are focused on the carnal deeds on the worldly deeds this is what we have to learn from the book of joshua verses 5 and uh 15 13 to 15 the commander of the army of the lord with this we shall conclude and god bless you heads bow down and eyes close heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity o lord mighty father great god and my beloved jesus and my dear holy spirit thank you for teaching us these lessons and may all my beloved brethren and sister apply these principles to their lives and may they be led by the spirit of god In jesus name we pray amen amen thank you my dear brothers and sisters thank you for tuning uh, in our to our in our channels and uh, subscribe to our in our channel and then you get access to all our playlist and videos and please share it with your friends families relatives and be an instrument in the hands of god to spread the word right you are the children of light and you need to lead others thank you god bless you and take care i will soon meet you with another session god bless